Now, when we're talking about fibrous mineral fill, the two terms that you're going to see most often are syntaxial and antiaxial. And basically, they're sort of uh, intuitive terms if you think about it. Syntaxial means that the fibrous mineral growth is of the same composition or is optically continuous with the grains around it. Well, that sounds fancy, but what that really means is, say, you have a quartzite sandstone and you have a quartz mineral fill. If you look at that under a petrographic microscope, they're going to be optically continuous. They're made of the same thing. But when you have an anti-axial, anti meaning not the same or not synchronous with, then you're going to have a composition that's not optically continuous. So let's say you have that same quartzite sandstone, but this fill we're talking about here is a calcite fill. So we use those two terms to differentiate. Why? Because we want to talk about our weak bonding planes. We want to talk about which plane is weak and which is strong. Why is it different? Well, in this antiaxial, let's say you have this quartzite sandstone and this calcite fill, you're cracking and your continuation of this fracture is going to take place on the boundaries here. Why? Well, because the weakest plane is going to be the plane of the most discontinuity. You have totally different compositions here and here. So you're going to have cracking here, and you're going to have cracking here. So in both places, see down here, you're going to have new mineral fill in a fibrous direction. But in the syntaxial case, when you have a mineral fill that's coming directly from these grains and is optically continuous with them, it's, let's say that quartz is precipitating out, the weakest plane is going to be right in the middle. And why is that? Well, it's because you have a very strong bond between the quartzite grains and the quartz that they themselves are lending to this fibrous growth. They're connected and continuous, but it is growing out from this side and it is growing out from this side. So the two sets of fibrous growth will meet in the middle, and this will be the plane of least continuity. So here you'll see the fibrous growth will grow out from a single cracking event. It will keep cracking here in the middle and building up, say, that quartz on both sides of it. So you have a different order of operation, a different morphology with the two kinds of fibrous fill situations. And, um, Remember, we said that the long axes of these fibers would often parallel our sigma-3 direction or that direction of extension. And also, you will sometimes see that these fibers may be oblique to that. And that indicates that the joints are opening at an angle. There's some shear displacement going on there, possibly. And often, you'll see an even more interesting phenomenon. You'll see a series of these parallel and then oblique and then parallel fibers in one mineral fill uh, location. What does that tell you? Well, that tells you the history of how this thing grew and what the stress fields look like that it formed under. So if originally it's parallel to your sigma-3 and then begins to show an oblique um, orientation, then you can see that the stress has changed and then it may be parallel to your sigma-3 again, so perhaps that stress that was applied was relaxed or whatever it was caused the stress field to change again. All these things are going to be conditional upon the context of whatever you're looking at, but keep in mind that's what you're looking at. You're looking at a history. You're looking at clues as to where that rock has been and what it's done, and that's your job as a geologist to be able to read those clues. And then the final structure that I want to mention in this segment is just the lineaments that you may often see in maps and in topographic uh, feature maps or uh, aerial photos. These are just large-scale features that tell you something about the geologic structure underneath. And they can be defined by faults. Here's your San Andreas right lateral fault. By escarpments, like this right here even by changes in vegetation, because those often have a lot to do with the composition of the rock lending to the soil that is underneath the vegetation. Many things can indicate these large-scale geologic changes, and a lot of times these lineaments 
can give you clues as to what's going on that you didn't have before. They're great tools, but they always have to be checked with the facts that you know because they can be misleading, but they can also be very illuminating. And uh, like I said, that's the final thing that I'm going to talk about in this section, so we will talk again next time.